This weekend, the world of Counter-Strike watched as two online era giants faced off in a five-map final for the ages. Danish underdogs Heroic emerged victorious, further cementing them and their opponents as world-class competitors whose hard work can't be discredited. But as anyone who actually watched the finals will tell you, it wasn't just that Heroic one. It was how they won. You heard about the KDM 1v4 with the P250? I haven't heard of that. How does it go, Chad? Well, it was a pretty important round. It was for the title. And he managed to sneak his way all the way through the back lines here and shoot Shiro in the back of the head. And what did he do after that? That's the AWP and kills the guy CT. <laughs> oh, oh my god, he's knifed him! Okay, so if you've ever watched me sit here and gush about CSGO, then you already know the drill. Please, please, please slap the sub button, like the video, and turn on notifications so you never miss an opportunity to feast your eyes on how pretty I am. Okay, so this past weekend, ESL Pro League Season 13 came to a conclusion. And what a conclusion it was. Against every expectation, the final four came down to a bunch of so-called onliners who'd been hustling for over a year to crack into the upper echelon of competitive Counter-Strike. Heroic, Gambit, Ninjas in Pajamas, and the bison rushing beauties on Furia. The thing is, these dudes didn't just make top four. They coasted to it, clapping the biggest names in CSGO along the way, with Gambit and Heroic going undefeated until the Grand Finals. Hell, Furia even 2-0'd Astralis in the quarters, taking train 16 to f***ing 2. Nades are gonna hurt too, but Art's still going Whoa. forward, Art's even taken down Clay! Oh my god, he's gonna get another one! Glocks is all that surrounds him, but oh! he's still popping off! A harrowing loss, but a spectacular victory. Headshots from Magisk. Delaying the inevitable is confirmed, 16 to 2. But the real showstopper came in the finals. Now, for those who don't know, Gambit vs. Heroic was heralded to be an absolutely sick face-off. Two undefeated underdogs whose respective journeys to the top had been long, arduous, and altogether pretty unexpected. The TLDR on Gambit, of course, is that since being led by Zeus to their awesome, fluky, one in a million major victory in 2017, they had done, well, shit all. That is, until about midway through last year, when COVID hit, everything went online, and Gambit got back Hobbit, one of their star fraggers from the 2017 major run, and that's when these CIS Cinderella's really began to take the world of CSGO by storm. As for Heroic, most of the story is focused around longtime competitor slash analyst slash all around sweetheart, Katie. After years of failing to get his big break on a myriad of rosters, and a few instances where he was just straight up screwed over, this opping IGL's time finally came when quarantine enabled he and the up-and-comers on Heroic he'd been given license to lead to grind their way to the top. Now, their first massive achievement came in August of last year, when they emerged victorious from the European division of ESL1 Cologne. This is the first Cologne for Borup. Cadian, Tessus, and they're the last team standing. Unbelievable. Absolutely incomprehensible. Winning a big trophy in Counter-Strike was not in my cabinet before this. 2015, I was on the desk for Cologne, only dreaming about reaching a final or getting that far in a tournament. Now we are the champions. Honestly, it's unbelievable. What a road for this team, what a road for me. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so speechless, man. This is... I don't That's know. I, never, brother. I didn't expect this. Of course, lots of people were quick to dismiss that achievement, echoing the all-too-obnoxious disclaimer that online results deserve to have an asterisk beside them. But Kadian didn't give a shit. Why? Because it was his name on the side of the Cologne Trophy, not those cretins on the HLTV forums. Well, I have a ESL1 Cologne Trophy. They don't. And looking at all the other teams playing, I don't think anyone is not taking these situations serious. We know that Corona might be affecting the scene for the next uh, couple of months still. So no one is just like leaning back. Everyone is fighting their hardest to win. I know that by watching all the other teams as well. And you gotta make the most of what you, you have, Brad. You can only eat what, what is served. And right yes. now, online CS is served, and we, we're definitely grabbing our part of uh, the, that meal as well. Needless to say, the longer that this so-called online era went on, 
the better that these teams who'd found their groove in this era started to do. Before long, Gambit were besting Virtus Pro in the IEM World Championship, and more and more youngins were eking their way into HLTV's global top 30. By the time the playoffs of ESL Pro League Season 13 rolled around, it was starting to become apparent that these onliners were a force to be reckoned with. That if these so-called real tier one rosters didn't buckle down and take online play seriously, they were at risk of getting left behind. Which brings us to the Grand Finals, where two untouchable bands of up-and-comers put on what was essentially the greatest show we could have asked for. Now, there was actually a fair bit of hype around these finals. I even debated slapping a gold heroic sticker on my op if they won. Which, like, I have to now, right? To start, Heroic get bodied on Inferno, and it looks like we're going home early. But wait, they mount an unthinkable comeback and somehow take Inferno? They ride that momentum straight into Vertigo, where they get absolutely shit on. Like, 16 to 3 shit on. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a series. Heroic proceed to take train 28 to 26, only to lose overpass 16 to 10? Like, what? Lo and behold, it all comes down to Mirage, where after literally hours of coin flippy chaos, Heroic simply run away with it. Before we even blink, Heroic is up 15 to six, and even though Cadian is in a 1v4 in an eco round, no one actually doubts that they will take it. Little did we know, we were about to witness what is quite literally a contender for the sickest clutch in the history of CSGO. You heard about the KDN 1v4 with the P250? I haven't heard of that. How does it go, Chad? Well, it was a pretty important round. It was for the title. He actually won it with just that P250. That P yeah, I can't believe nobody it. Nobody was looking, and he managed to sneak his way all the way through the back lines here and shoot Shiro in the back of the head. Right. And what did he do after that? That's nuts. So, so he actually shoots the AWP in the back of the head without anyone looking. Gets the AWP and kills the guy CT. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh my god, he's knifed him! And he's gotten away with the AWP! I'm starting to get nervous! There's no way. There's no way! Katie, you can't win Pro League like this! You can't win Pro League like this! No way! Axar's left! 40 seconds and the bomb's on A! Take your time, son. You're about to make the play of your career. Now, Axel's on ramp. He's got 30 seconds to think this one through. A knife kill? God. Okay. He's thinking about ramp. Jumps Saw him. Gets the info. He just has to hit this shot, and he's done it for Heroic. The leader calling well above his years, clearing corners. Oh, and no! Clearing. You're an animal! Heroic have done it, and I just can't believe it. 40% of their team only together since February. And with nothing but a P250, Chad, I'm in disbelief. Now, for those who aren't especially familiar with Counter-Strike, you need to understand, this play, for all intents and purposes, is impossible. Kadian has a P250, no armor, the bomb is smack dab in the middle of A, and he's up against four fully armed CTs. This can't be done. And yet, somehow, some way, he pulls it off. How? Well, for starters, the knife kill. Now, to be clear, Kadian didn't do this for the BM or for the style points. He did it for the money. For those who don't know, getting a knife kill in CSGO nets you $1,500, which is more than any other type of frag, ensuring that Kadian can buy an off the next round. It just so happens that because he opted to knife the stairs player instead of shoot him, he was able to pick up his off. Now, had he chosen to shoot the AWPer instead of knifing him, he would have had to close the gap before being able to pick up his gun, which in all likelihood wouldn't have been possible. This way, he just emerges from the frag already holding it. Next, he hugs stairs, anticipates the swing, and sure enough, because Naphany is succumbing to both panic and greed, boom. Since he already saw the third guy swing from ticket to triple, he rips off two perfectly placed wall bangs. And would you look at that? He's gotten it down to a 1v1. He mollies firebox for good measure, holds it, and since nothing's there, assumes that the guy has to be ramp. He sneaks a peek on him holding Tetris on an info jump, and, well, the rest is quite literally history. Also, if you haven't seen it, 
This is what the winning moment looked like at the heroic camp. Warning, it will give you chills. It has been a very long time since I have seen the Counter-Strike community just collectively declare seconds after a play happened that it had already been etched into the annals of this franchise's long and storied history. Sometimes you see a play and just know. In fact, people are already pestering Valve to slap a graffiti on stairs commemorating the play. Of course, it seems unlikely that that'll actually happen, since in the past, graffitis have always been reserved for plays that happen during majors. Specifically, Olaf's burning defuse, Fnatic's four-man mid-peak, Coldzera's jumping 4k, and Simple's falling off. Still, it could be a great way for Valve to show people that they are still engaged in CS, and a great way to pay respect to what ESL are doing for the game in the modern era. Also, it feels like we're kind of just due for one, since it's been like five years since the last one was added. I will also say though, that it doesn't need to be a graffiti per se. Freiburg's Via Adamo on Inferno, for instance, is a non-spray painted tribute to his overall reputation as Counter-Strike's King of Banana. There's also the Olaf boost sign or Doja's grenade poster. They could certainly do something along those lines. But the coolest thing about the Cadian Clutch was how it brought seemingly every eye in esports onto Counter-Strike. Seconds after it happened, it went viral. Virtually everyone I follow on social media, regardless of what esport they're engaged in, couldn't help but be absolutely floored at how insane it was. Which goes to show just how awesome and impactful this online era that everyone's been so quick to write off has actually been. Like it or not, there does seem to be a sort of changing of the guard happening right now. A lot of experienced, established juggernauts are struggling to stay consistent, and every time a Furia or a Virtus Pro wipes the floor with them, people start spouting, yeah, but it's online. And while that's not to say that things won't pick up again for them when we're back on LAN, what's their excuse gonna be if they don't? What do these serious S tier teams say if we go back to LAN and they continue to get run over by these onliners? We let them get the better of us when it didn't matter and now that it does, we simply forgot how to beat them? To be clear, I am not suggesting that Navi or Astralis or whoever all of a sudden suck. That would be ridiculous. What I am saying is that you can't just write off a year and a half of results and assume that things will pick up where they left off. The world of Counter-Strike is changing. In fact, it has changed. And these top tier teams need to ensure that they're keeping up. Don't get me wrong, I am dying for lands to come back and will jump with joy the day that they do. But I'm also having a ball watching as competitors like Cadian and rosters like Heroic, Gambit, and all the others who've worked so hard slap everyone in sight. So before you start crapping on the current state of competitive CS and jotting down asterisks beside all the results, show some respect because this era has given us one of the sickest plays in the history of the game. You may not like it, but this is sure as shit what peak performance looks like. Also, there's this work stack we have now, like legit. Like there's like guys who play, and they're all in silver. All five of them are in silver. I played once with them. It was rough. <laughs> it was, <laughs> that sounded mean. It was not, that's not what happened. I think, I don't know if I told you. Yeah, it, they're all silver, four silver, and my rank is a lot higher. So it didn't pair us against one high rank and four silvers. It paired us against five gold novas. So, which is rough, right? Because it's five players who are better than my, my four players, but not better than me. And so it, it, it's rough, like, yeah, it's, it's a tough, tough scenes, as you would say. Tough scenes, tough scenes on, on the B apartments. <laughs> tough, scenes. tough scenes on the B apartments, not, not quite unthinkable, just, just tough.